What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the new channel, uh, Just Matt Makes. Um, I was hoping to do sort of a introduction video, um, but then ultimately I just decided that uh, what better way to make an introduction video than with a new project. Um, so yeah, we have the Fiend mask. Uh, this is a latex mask. Um, obviously, this stuff here is just for display, the hood, uh, the dreads, and things like that. The dreads may possibly be for sale. Um, but they do take a lot of time, so they would be pretty expensive. Um, but I definitely think that they give the mask sort of a good spooky look. I'll try to spin this a little bit without uh, messing up the camera. Uh, but yeah, so like I said, the dreads may be for sale. Uh, but ultimately, they do take a ton of time. Uh, so I don't know exactly what the price point for those would be. But uh, yeah, they could be turned into a wig. Um, they could just be used for display, such as these right here. These are actually just sort of like cheat mounted to the armature that I have here. Um, that is just my display armature. Uh, yeah, so we'll take all this stuff off and I'll give you guys a very in-depth look of how the mask looks without all of this stuff on. And that'll try the buckles and things like that. Alright, so let's get into this thing. Uh, this is a very thick cast. Um, I do believe that it weighs a little over a pound with all of the... Hardware and stuff on it, uh, so it is a little bit of a heavier mask. As you can tell, um, this is actually the thickness that I tried to get it to be all the way through. Ultimately, that didn't happen. Um, I did some things with the latex. Uh, this mask was slush casted, uh, which is normally how I do pretty much every single mask that I've ever made. Um, but uh, I think that I will do things a lot differently next time. I do believe that I will rework the mold um, and bring in a dwell cast uh, because it will it will allow me to give a u uh, uniform thickness all the way around. So I definitely think that'll be the route that we go uh, moving forward. So as stated, this is latex. Um, all the paints are using just standard acrylic paints. Uh, I do add um, a few things to the paint just to make adhesion better, uh, finish better. And then, of course, once it is clear-coated, um, it will basically be built to last uh, a pretty good while. Hopefully the entire length of the mask's life. That's the goal. Now, as far as all of this buckles and straps and hardware goes, uh, everything's pretty much standard. I tried to get everything as accurate to Bray's actual mask as possible uh, using uh, Savini Studios pictures and then of course talking to a few of the people that actually helped build Bray's mask uh, just to sort of try to get a better idea as to what I was dealing with and then of course just to make things a little bit more accurate. Uh, some of the dimensions that I used for things were just straight off of WWE's site because they claim to have been straight from the mold of the original mask so I would assume that the straps and some of the smaller things such as like the elastic harness would have been pretty similar if not the exact same as the one used on Bray's mask. So we go in here, uh, we have a one and a half inch leather strap uh, and leather buckle set up. Um, Bray's I'm pretty sure was two inches. Uh, two inches didn't really look right and ultimately I don't really like big bulky straps anyway. I feel like it really kind of takes away from the overall like comfort of the mask. So I dropped it down to an inch and a half. Um, I did do some prototypes uh, about a year or so back where I did the two inches. And, you know, a half inch really isn't that crazy of a, a change, but I, I definitely wanted it to be a little smaller and a little bit more easy to manage. There are also a couple of other features that you'll notice that are a little different than Bray's. Um, I used eyelets in mine just to kind of add to the, the effect and the overall finish of these straps. And then, of course... Sprays were boxed off at the end. I did not like that. I felt like it looked very unfinished. Um, so I decided to give it this nice uh, angled taper. Um, I definitely think that that just added to the overall look of the straps. And then, of course, you know, it's just a oil dyed leather. Uh, so there is brown on the inside. Braze was black on black. It definitely adds to the finish, I think, to have the dual colored uh, leather. Um, I do have the support strap in here on the inside. And of course, everything is finished off with these nice uh, Chicago screw style rivets, I guess. They're not exactly the same as a Chicago screw. They are a little different, uh, but ultimately they go together the exact same way. It's just a post um, that sits on the other side. And then you just screw this end in or vice versa. You can have the finished flat end on the outside and then of course have the screw on the inside. So really there's not much else to say. 
um, or there's not really much else things to cover uh, with this thing being on the armature. Um, I'll take it off and kind of give you guys a better inside look as to how this whole thing comes together. All right. So here's the mask off the armature. Obviously, again, this thing is massive as far as thickness goes. Um, so it does sit on its own pretty well. Um, normal masks will usually, uh, unless they're full head, will usually just sort of fold up onto each other. Um, of course, over time, as this thing is worn and the latex starts to sort of relax a little bit, uh, this thing will fold up on its own. But all, realistically, um, it needs to just be displayed on a head because that's pretty much the best way to see this thing in all of its glory. So I didn't, uh, I didn't take the time to strap this thing together. I figured it would probably be a little easier to show off some of the details that I was talking about a little earlier. Uh, the one and a half inch nice uh, matte colored roller buckles. Uh, I went with these just to add to more of like an aged look. Uh, I don't know for sure if braids were regular standard nickel plated or if it was sort of this matte finish. Uh, but I like the matte finish a lot more, so that's what I went with. Obviously, if that's something that you're interested in, to either do the standard nickel plated, or if you want to do a different color entirely, um, I'm pretty sure you can also get these in like a gold. Um, I think you can get them in all black, uh, so that would be something else that we could probably negotiate on, and uh, yeah, it could be done for yours. Here's a little bit better look of the support strap on the inside. This thing actually spins. Um, so it helps whenever you have the mask on, depending on if you have this strap a little tighter or this strap a little tighter, there is plenty of room for this thing to spin and sort of fit on your head, uh, just however it's needed. I don't think that this actually gives any real support other than just keeping these straps from pulling apart really far. Um, Bray wore his mask to wrestle in, so this was more than likely just an added feature to help him keep this on his head while he was being thrown around. Now, the other side of the strap is pretty, pretty standard, one and a half inch. Uh, again, it's oil dyed, so you have the nice, um, more natural colored uh, suede on the inside, and then, of course, the nice slick finish of the oil dye on the outside. Um, all the holes have been reinforced with these nice eyelets. Um, so, again, this is not something that was on Bray's mask, but it definitely gives it that extra um, addition uh, as far as just looks go. Now we jump further into the elastic harness. Again, this is just a one inch elastic strap. Um, the way that this is actually put in here, because I don't know how this was put into Bray's. Uh, so I doubled over the elastic, glued the doubled over portion of the elastic to itself. So everything inside of this loop is glued in. The side that touches the suede has been glued in. And then of course the washers here have also had a little bit of glue applied to them. Uh, I say glue, it's contact cement, so there's tons of flexibility in this elastic. Um, it does not hinder any of the flexibility in the strap or the mask itself, um, because, you know, I've seen a lot of times that people will glue their masks in, and it's like super glue or hot glue, and you just, you, you can't do that. So all of these have this setup, um, all four straps have this setup of the elastic that has been doubled over, glued to itself, glued to the strap. And then, of course, there is a little bit of glue on the washer um, as I screw everything together. Um, so it's a pretty much permanent bond to all the pieces. But if it, there is for any reason this mask needs to be taken apart, um, it won't be a problem. There's nothing that a little bit of elbow grease and uh, a screwdriver can't take care of. Now, as far as this part goes, um, I just really added this to keep these straps from sliding up and down. Um, again, just an added feature that Brace had to sort of aid him in the wearing of the mask while he was in the ring. So yeah, that's uh, pretty much this whole thing here. Um, just tons of acrylic paint, tons of the additives that I add for adhesion, and then the finish that I put over top of all the paints to help completely sealed the mask off. Um, I really enjoy wearing my masks, uh, so I love to build the masks that I make to be able to be worn. Um, I want them to be strong, I want them to be comfortable, but I also want them to be nice display pieces because, you know, I mean, ultimately, that's why you have masks, that's why you're in the hobby, because um, you, you just really enjoy displaying this type of stuff. Um, so, you know, if this is something that you are interested in, uh, this copy right here that I'm recording, uh, is 250 us dollars, uh, shipped in the U S is free. Um, and then of course shipped internationally, we'll just have to kind of figure that out because 
shipping is uh, insane, and depending on where you are, it could be a little cheaper, it could be a little bit more. Um, so we'll just kind of get that figured out. But this copy right here, this very thick, uh, heavy-duty copy, which I'm pretty sure is like one and a half pounds um, with everything together, I'm pretty sure uh, is what it come out to. Uh, this is 250 US dollars shipped in the US. Um, the other copies uh, after this and this exact style will probably range in that area. Um, and then of course there are available, there are opportunities available to make custom uh, masks. So this mask, 250, um, and then we'll kind of work our way into some of the other pieces that you guys saw, or well, the other piece that you guys saw in the uh, beginning of the video. Um, we'll kind of go over that a little bit and potential price points. So at the beginning of the video, I showed this mask off with a hood and a uh, set of dreads. Um, dreads that are unfortunately uh, very, very real. Um, they are synthetic hair. They're not real, uh, but they are made the way that the uh, dreading process is. Um, these are hand done and each dread has taken me probably a little bit under an hour maybe. Uh, I did get a little faster as I practiced on a bunch. These are the final products of some of the ones that I did. The other ones were atrocious. They were either super, super skinny. Uh, they didn't dread properly so they were very like frayed everywhere or there was a couple that I made that were huge and they just looked ridiculous. Um, so these here were the final product of what I spent probably about two or three days perfecting, or at, at least attempting to perfect. Um, so there, I know there has been intrigue and interest on these. Uh, I've had tons of messages, especially in my old account, um, about dreads and like re more realistic dreads. Uh, these can be made, uh, but they will definitely not be cheap. Um, if I had to be completely honest... Uh, a set of nine. I'm pretty sure there's nine here. Yeah, there's nine here. So this is roughly about 10 hours worth of work, um, which is absolutely insane. Uh, but yeah, if I had to be completely honest, these would probably cost about as much as the mask. Um, now, the materials and things like that are not very expensive, but this is all time. Um, this is definitely a time-based price. Um, uh, now I can do more, uh, you know, obviously you can have as many done as you want, but just understand that, um, to do more, uh, you will be looking at a, a much bigger price tag. Um, there will probably not be any of these sold, uh, just due to the fact that they are so expensive. But if there is any interest in these, I can make them into a wig. Um, I know a lot of a lot of people would probably want this to go together, uh, maybe into like sort of a bray cosplay or something like that. Um, so this can definitely be done. Uh, there's tons of wig caps out there and things that these can be attached to. So yeah, uh, if there is any interest in this, obviously you can message me. Just let me know, um, and then we'll just we'll kind of talk and go from there. So. With all of that out of the way, uh, price points, uh, things that I've covered, I'm pretty sure I got everything that needs to be said. Um, we will end off with some outdoor shots of this thing because I really haven't taken this thing out to really fully display it in all of its glory. So I will definitely do a little short video at the end to showcase this thing out in the, in the wild uh, so that way you can see all of its colors and all that fun stuff and just sort of see what it looks like uh, in real time. Obviously the studio or the these lights that I have here for this sort, sort of show it off, uh, but nothing too, too fancy. Um, this is more or less just to get this mask out because I'm definitely happy about it. Um, unfortunately it came at a pretty rough time for uh, wrestling fans, but uh, it inspired me to finish this project. So I definitely want to put this out into the world um, because I know a lot of people would probably really appreciate it. So, with that being said, uh, thank you guys for viewing this, for watching this. Um, if you enjoyed the video, give it a like. If you didn't, 
tell me about it in the comments. Uh, you can subscribe to the channel for more content. I am currently working on a couple of other projects. Uh, they are very, very different projects that I've never done before. So they are taking a little bit more time uh, than I would like. But uh, I hope to have that out in the months coming up. If nothing else, we will start the new year out on a very strong note uh, with tons of projects and uh, yeah, so uh, links to the Instagram, the new Instagram for Just Matt Makes will be in the link in the description below. Uh, you can head over there and message me and we can talk about making this or making tons of the other stuff that I've made um, and can still make. Um, or if you are part of the new process uh, and you want something else made, um, yeah, just shoot me a message and we'll just kind of see how we can make it happen. So thanks. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.